So all mixed, done and dusted, yeah? Yep. With our sushi knife. That's sushi, sushi knife. Sushi Putty knife. paddle. Putty paddle. Right. I will use the correct terminology. Let's get some of this material out and then use it. Mate, I can, I'm right, so Right, so Rage excited. Ultra. Yes. It's a premium body filler. Mate, all they've got to do is like look High at quality. the body shops in America. Like the big custom garages. And, you know, what they use is the dog's bollocks. They can't cut corners because of the reputation, you know. Um, and you will see Avoco in every single one. You know, it's, it, it's a will, brand they trust. You will find, if you look at the high-end part of the market for the, the crash repair industry, in the tendency you will find Avoco filler. Yeah. And what we're saying is now, this, got, this, this is available to you, to you guys. Good hint. As soon as you can, get the lid back on the product. Okay, oh, you mentioned earlier that you can smell the solvent. If you can smell it, the solvent's evaporating, it's escaping. The product will eventually dry out, so make sure you cap it off well, get the lid back on as soon as you can. And it also stops contamination going into the can, yep. over spray, Bits of crap. spatter, yeah. sanding, dust, just general workshop contamination. I mean, how long would a can <coughs> usually last regarding shelf life? In all honesty, they, they have got a date on there, which is the recommended date for use by. Um, Realistically, body fillers, in my experience, they're good for five years in a can at least if you look after them well. But you know, throughput now in typical body shops around the world, not just the UK, is you know, a can of body filler like that may, may, may last a day. Oh, hardener, mate, that's right. a different color blue, Check blue hardener. Out. There you go, you won't find that just anywhere. No, and that spreader is massive, right? You're right, harden the ratios for a puddle such as that. We're looking at four to five inch puddle across the diameter. We would add a complete ribbon, a harder from one edge to the other. That's nice and easy to follow. Yeah. If it was six to eight inches, we would add a ribbon plus a half. Right. And for small puddles at about two inches, we had half a diameter ribbon. Yeah. Harder. Yeah. Very, very simple to calculate. That would throw you in the ballpark of about two percent. Yeah, yeah. I mean they'll they'll start, you know, I mean once they get it and they start playing with it, they'll they'll get a feel for it and how quickly it goes off mm. and do you know what I mean? So Right, so now the idea is to mix that as thoroughly as we can, as quickly as we can, obviously because we're into a working time. Yep. Um, and what we're looking for is, once we've got it mixed, is a nice consistent colour. Which with it being blue... You can see the hardener going in amazing. nice, you can see there, you can see the hardener going in, you can yeah. see exactly where you got it and where you haven't. So we've got a nice uniform colour. And there's a, you know, there is certain ways to mix. To there mix is, filler, absolutely. You know? um, I'm gonna... a soft, hard, soft, hard sort of type of guy. Right. Do you know what I mean? Where we go hard, hard, soft, soft, hard. You know what I mean? And as you're pressing and dragging, pressing and dragging, yep. I can see you're more of a stirring. I'm squeezing. You're is what a squeezer I'm, squeezer I'm a squeezer. Man. And what we're doing is as I'm mixing, obviously I'm mixing the product together. If I slow it down, you can see the stripes in there. Yeah. We I mean, are I... actually expelling the air at the same time. What you find is, if you don't do that, some other techniques such as chopping, which chopping and whipping, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is this one, yeah, folding. The, look at all the fantastic. air. Fantastic! This is exactly how we make a cake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fold it up, and you want. And with every one of these holes. folds, we've got air. And in fact, what we'll do is, before we actually go and use this product, we'll show you just how much air we've put in it. We, I mean, mate, you can see. And it. Then hopefully, I can get it back out again. <laughs> right. Yeah. If I try and, yeah. you can see there on the surface yeah, there it's tearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With all your air pockets and stuff, you know, what I mean, mix your filler properly. Reduce your time using additional products to take out those pinholes. Yeah. If we just leave that there for a second, I'll give it a tap from underneath. Yeah. See there the we go. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Right. Let's try and get rid of some of that hair. <laughs> what I suggest we do is we we'll squeeze the product out like this yeah. on the board. I mean, I love the fact the hardness blue. That is absolutely it's simple, simple yet effective. Um, obviously over here we have a lot of red hardeners, that's, that's usually yep. what have you, and they do fade. You know what I mean? It's, it is difficult to identify if it's fully mixed, and there are instances where it's not been fully mixed, mm. and then you've got to dig it all out and start again. This is true. Um, Another little tip here, and I know we're pushing through it because we're limited by time now, is that if you keep your product spread out on your mixing board, it will give you a longer working life. If really? you keep it mashed up in the middle in a big lump, then it's going to build up the exotherm, the, the oh, chemical the heat reaction, quicker, the heat isn't reaction. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Build up quicker. The quicker it builds up, the quicker it will start to kill. Yeah, I'm with so you. by keeping it a thin section, we reduce that slightly. That's okay. top tip. Top App tip there, man. Application. Yeah. Thinking, where's my body fill? I've got much on there. 
For the very, very, very first initial coat, we call this wetting out. We apply a small amount of product over the entire repair area. Wow, look how Anywhere well where the fill is going to be applied and we're relying on very good adhesion. And now, by the way, incidentally, I'm applying this onto 180 abraded clear coat. Yeah, you've not you've not gone right down. Not, no. Basically, I mean, look well, you how- You told me that clear coat is good clear coat, Matt. So hey, I'm this is quartz you. clear coat, my friend. This is quartz clear coat. So, mate, I can- And now we've built up in layers. Dude, look how well that spreads. Wow. Oh, look how well he, sp he spreads it. Oh yeah, you are, mate, you're the master. <laughs> I, I, I think you should like reteach me everything because I've clearly been doing it wrong because that is an absolutely amazing spreading technique with your big spreader. So we are making this, <laughs> we, I say we're building up nice and slow and gradual. Rather than trying a pudding, as I like to call it, a big lump of filler on. Yeah. And we'll look at the reasons why. I mean, even though you, it's not dragging. No. That's what I'm noticing, it's not It's dragging. very, very creamy. Yeah. You just see it goes in nicely on the edge. We'll leave that one like that, Matt. This boiling filler, now we're working once again, I said, with Rage Ultra as our premium top of the line filler. Typically, how long would you leave your fillers before you start sanding? Oh, 20 minutes or so, 20, 20 minutes. 30 minutes. Okay, Allow. this filler, we'll be looking at sanding that now in about seven to eight minutes. It's nice and warm in here today. We've got a good percentage of hardener in there. Seven to eight minutes, we'll be able to start to remove wow. the initial layer of that product. And what would we start with? What would you initially start with? I would recommend, with? when you get a good application, it's a good sound, clear coat, and a, a, a good substrate, 120. You don't need to go any coarser than that. No. And we do have to stress, this is off the clear coat. There's the clear coat right there. Do you know what I mean? Look at that clear coat. And then, <coughs> you know, 180, and we're down to it there. I mean, talk about reducing your product time. I mean, we talk about application onto a braided, original manufacturer's finished clear coat. Yeah. Ideally, in your shop, I don't think you will come across a lot of original finishes. <laughs> if you're gonna come across anything original at all. <laughs> no, we tend not to do original. Yeah, there's a few layers on that. The people know what's on that bonnet. So, happy days, right? Let's Fantastic. let it cure, and then we'll get All back here. We'll look at something else. Sweet.